Welcome to Business Talk here on Business Tech, where we've uh, been focusing with EY on sustainability. Now, there are lots of catchy tech suffixes uh, on things nowadays. Think fintech and insurtech and edtech and health tech, but there's a new one for you, ESG tech. We see both digital and ESG initiatives really aiming to address changing stakeholder expectations and how evolving business and operating models impact the world and of course, meet society's needs. And there's a growing convergence here between the adoption of digital technologies and their potential to impact on the ESG priority. Uh, Henny Himan is EY Africa advisory leader and is uh, in Nairobi at the well uh, at the moment, just showing you how technology has allowed us to do all of these amazing things. Welcome, Henny. I'm sure that this is something you're seeing more and more of. How, how are digital transformation and ESG intersecting to provide some context? Yeah, thank you, Michael, and, and, and thank you very much for hosting me. Um, so, Michael, yeah, it's, it's a fascinating subject. Um, I think in the series, we've really focused on on why, I mean, ESG is, is such an important driver, really, that customers and employees and governments uh, and um, um, clients are really expecting businesses to really drive uh, towards net zero. I think I think what we uh, are also seeing with our clients is that that they uh, really all go through a process to come up with these r- programs, which has far-reaching implications on their businesses, mm-hmm. and they are looking towards technology and digital to to really drive value in these programs, both as enablers of the programs, but also sometimes and in most cases actually technology is part and parcel of the ESG initiative. And therefore, it it becomes very difficult to divorce your ESG uh, program from the technology and digital agenda. It it really is one single agenda. Yeah. And I mean, that's certainly the the feeling that I'm getting chatting to a lot of uh, CEOs at the moment is both of these now sit really in the core of the strategy. That's true, Michael. Yeah, and 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 we we really when we speak to our clients, we we really like to speak to them about value led sustainability. So mm-hmm. so really about thinking about how to protect uh, the organization and then also to creating new sources of value. And and I, I guess that that technology becomes then uh, it becomes an enabler in that journey. It becomes a uh, accelerator. It becomes a connector. Uh, and then finally, a value creator in that journey. So, so it really is part and parcel. Technology and digital and ESG is now a, a, a truly a C-suite and specifically CEO agenda point. Now, from that, I mean, if you look at it and how it's reframing the strategy conversation, uh, what are the kinds of conversations that you're having and, and some examples here of how we're seeing uh, digital or technology, for example, completely reform or change a business through that ESG lens? Yeah, so, so Michael, I think, I think what we're seeing is that, um, I think what, you, what you, you're sort of alluding to is how does it fundamentally change the business strategy, right? So, mm. so as a strategic enabler, uh, what we're seeing is many organizations, uh, because of this massive mega force of ESG, are taking uh, the time out to to truly reflect on organizational strategy, and and I, th- I think we're seeing we're seeing organizations respond in different ways. Uh, sort of sort of you see organizations really thinking through uh, their purpose um, and then uh, what to do to execute on that purpose. And here, I guess the best examples would be um, on on uh, motor vehicle manufacturers really rethinking what their purpose is. And it's about mobility. It's not about producing uh, engines, ca- carbon consuming engines, and fundamentally changing their strategy to produce um, hydrogen uh, or then um, uh, e-mobility uh, vehicles and services. So that's the one aspect of it. But we're also seeing as technology emerges, it's actually phenomenal the amount of research that is and, and funding that's going into this. Uh, and a, as technology emerges, organizations are able to continuously uh, iteratively challenge their strategy. So organizations who had significant challenges around uh, flue gas emissions uh, now can look at new technologies which capture those flue gases and forms uh, products, uh, downstream products 
that they can then sell into the marketplace and 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 that becomes proceeds into into not only their net zero program but also then i guess as a as a financial benefit to the organization as an alternative revenue stream yeah. so so really they, you're seeing both i guess at a business model level uh, where where technology and technological advancement is really transforming that and and, and we do a lot of work with clients using technology in that process to to rethink and then also i guess the iterative innovative process and driving that to adapt and adopt technology to their businesses and their business models to drive alternative sources of revenue and it reminds me of what neil frunemann was saying at the recent joburg in daba just about the way they're approaching the battery battery min- minerals value chain you know, looking for the examples through the business, but also understanding that any new assets that they acquire would have to be able to uh, make it through an ESG type screen where you're not going to be picking up assets that are almost impossible to decarbonize into the future. So this really becomes core when you when you talk about that strategic lens and gives you an opportunity, I think, when we think of the just transition as a business owner, as a CEO, to sit down with your board and say, right, let's model, let's map out where the risks are, but equally where the opportunities are and, and you know, how the technology is moving, you know, it may create future revenue streams in the future. When you look at this through this lens of the transition, I think often when we talk ESG, it is the E, almost the capital E here, this big target of net zero by 2050. Um, how do you see it playing in the spell, in the realm of the, the accelerated transition to net zero to 2050. Yeah, thanks, so, uh, Michael. So, so, so typically, um, most organizations that we end up are at the phase of now having thought through this journey and having come up with a journey. And, and as you say, it's, it's a decade or decades long journey, which they are embarking on. Those are, are very large programs and, 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 and we, use technology with our clients and and digital really to help drive those programs. So some examples of this, there's the program itself. So a program needs to typically have multiple projects. All of those projects have different business cases. Those business cases needs to be governed. Uh, We need to track uh, how how we're doing against that. We need to collect data uh, around the impact of of these programs. And we need to, of course, do portfolio management all the time on these programs. Technology and digital is really just a big enabler of that journey. But then secondly, I think that, that uh, you know, you, the, at the heart of this is, 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 is decarbonization, right? So, yeah. so, so you really need to deeply understand uh, the, the value chain uh, carbon uh, e- emissions. And, and, and th- there's some complex modeling. So, so we've worked with the likes of Microsoft to develop complex modeling tools uh, to, to really deeply understand the, the, the carbon footprint of various value chains. And then organizations use this to understand how these initiatives that they're embarking upon over decades are going to have an impact on this value chain carbon emission. So, so, so those are some of the examples. We also, of course, what we're seeing a lot in the marketplace at the moment is, is just operations emission calculators that get used and they're very and very useful. There's some exciting stuff happening though, and what we're also seeing is that <clears throat> uh, around, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, we, we're seeing that in the in the supply chain traceability space that that blockchain as a technology is really yeah. emerging uh, to 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 help understand the carbon footprint across this supply chain value chain, and then ultimately uh, uh, the, what w- the latest technology that we're seeing emerging in this space. Is, is around the trading of the carbon credits. And, and, and that becomes vital for organizations. Sometimes it's just those initiatives that are marginal in business case. If the carbon credits can push it across uh, for them and, and give them a positive IRR, then it just becomes so much easier uh, to do. So, so, so really exciting space uh, in, in, in the journey management cycle. And on that carbon modeling, I think that, that's hugely useful from a scope three emissions perspective. I think that is often where there is a big challenge. You know, understanding that value chain can be, depending on what industry you're in, quite complex. I mean, if you're a financial services firm, if you're a business, understanding that book and, you know, you know how you measure it and where you, where you uh, measure the change uh, and, and all of those things are, are hugely important if you're to meaningfully transform on this journey and not just pay lip service 
Uh, and I think ultimately uh, there's a lot of cynicism out there because I think to this point, a lot of what has been spoken around ESG and, and decarbonization um, has been lip service uh, to, to large extents. Now we're seeing it being operationalized. And I think that's where we get into the weeds and where it's really exciting, but also where it comes to the G in, in that there has to be governance here. There, there has to be trust embedded into this. Uh, and how are you seeing this conversation take place and through the lens of technology to improve the, the governance of this journey? Yeah, yeah, Michael. And I think I think the cynicism is probably was probably warranted in the past um, because I think that m- many of our organisations really uh, I, I think no one doubted the significance of of why this should happen, but but people just didn't know how to 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 get the journey going, yeah. right? So yeah. I think I think now there's maturity coming into it, and I think there's also the 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 the, the technology world has responded and uh, now give us options around. So so we're seeing, for instance, in manufacturing operations, uh, organizations now these technologies coming out, which which sort of optimizes the 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 trans- energy transition loss from solar into for instance green steam that is very useful in mining and manufacturing operations that you don't first have to translate it into solar and there's losses there and then solar gets translated into a heat exchange uh, for, to to generate steam and 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 then it just becomes very cumbersome for organizations we're now seeing the world respond, really, and the world has taken on this challenge, and the technologies that are coming out is really enabling. And some of my clients are, are deeply embedding this in their business operations, which uh, is driving, first of all, uh, just cost efficiency for them uh, uh, using new technology, but also really um, driving a carb- decarbonization of the value chain. But you're right. I mean, I think it's all about the governance and the trust Mm -hmm. and ultimately Mm -hmm. reporting on this and integrity in reporting is is a fundamental factor. And and we we are, I would say, in certain parts of the world, Michael, we we are getting there. I think in a in a South African context, uh, we are seeing a lot of voluntary reporting at the moment. But we really need to get standardized reporting uh, in this space going. And I think uh, the way that we, we, we've we looked at this, uh, Michael, is to say, OK, let's understand the impact of ESG and let's start getting data of all aspects of ESG into what we term a data fabric. Yeah, I think. And that, sorry, yeah, Michael. No, I was just going to say, I think you touched on such a key component from where I sit, because I chat to certain asset managers who believe it, who understand and and 100% uh, are on board with the risks for, you know, with status quo and doing nothing and others who are fairly cynical. And I think a large part of that, the lacuna is this lack of trust. And the lack of trust is because there hasn't been a narrative created around what's being done, what impact it's having and how you're moving things forward. And I think a lot of that boils down to standardization. So I just wanted to build on that point because I think having that taxonomy and having that standardization has got to be absolutely key. Yeah, Michael, I, I had the privilege of, of spending some time at COP26 last year. And I would say that one of the biggest outcomes of COP26 was a almost an outcry of... Um, Clients, NGOs, um, the, the the professional services community uh, uh, around to, to the IFRS community around saying, please think about standardization of reporting around ESG, and they've taken mm-hmm. up that challenge. So we have had many conversations and dialogues with with uh, with the IFRS community, and they are very actively working on those standards. Ultimately. The impact on organizations, I mean, the data of this does not come out of your financial systems. I mean, some of it does, uh, but the majority actually does not. So so it's a very different reporting uh, that that you are looking at and and, and, uh, needs to be, and the compliance Mm -hmm. aspects around regulations and the reporting around compliance of those regulations also needs to be thought through very carefully. And of course, technology and digital can be a huge enabler in that process to make it less cumbersome for organizations. So how are the data fabrics um, enabling this better view then? Uh, Just talk to me a little bit more about the data fabrics. 
Yeah, so so data fabric in essence uh, is a data store in a business. Well, it's it's in a in a think of it as a data lake or a big big right. operational data store with a with a metadata layer uh, above, and that metadata really uh, is uh, uh, metadata. Of course, is the data about data, which really helps understand all the sources and the data lineage in an organization around all aspects of ESG. What that then enables you to do is it enables you to run various um, use cases on that single view of the truth. And, and in essence, what we're trying to create is a single view of the truth around ESG in an organization. So that regardless of how standards change in the future, that organizations can report in accordance with that use case or that standard uh, quite easily because all of the data and relevant data is in a structured way uh, in a data lake that organizations can utilize for that purpose. Now, uh, listening to you describe it, I'm thinking here yeah, of almost cataloging in a library so that uh, depending on where you are, no matter how yeah. things change, you know exactly where to go to which piece of information. And, um, you know, and that fabric is really your chief librarian that can help you get to that information. Maybe it's a journalist in me. We've got a, a library down in the basement of Arena. Uh, is that similar to, uh, you know, what you're describing? It's, it's very similar. I think uh, the, the the public cloud and private clouds make it a lot easier. Uh, so mm. you don't have to have it in the basement. You can have it in the cloud. <laughs> but that just helps you with scalability. And uh, it, it, it really drives down your, your cost of ownership, especially early on in your journey when there isn't that much data, right? So, so you're not going to have massive uh, storage costs and servers and those type of things. You can utilize the public cloud in a structured way. Uh, and as your as your data uh, around ESG grows, so so will your investment therefore in your reporting requirements. Yeah, uh, Henny, I need to bring you into Arena because we we we're still running a lot of things uh, the old analog way yeah. on paper. We need to digitize that entire library, get it into the cloud. I couldn't agree with you more. Just as a last thought, uh, you know, if I'm at a C-suite level and I'm thinking here about this digital transformation and ESG journey that I've embarked on and the, the intersection of all of these things, you know, what, what's that concluding thought that you want to leave with uh, the viewer um, to ensure that they get this right? Because ultimately, if you get it right, this can really lead to uh, future-proofing your organization and, and setting you apart and delivering value for all stakeholders, which really, as a board, I mean, there, there's no greater purpose. Yeah, thank, thanks, Michael. I think uh, the thought that I would like to leave uh, with the with the listeners is um, I think whether you are looking at reframing of your organizational strategy or whether you are looking at optimizing the journey to net zero or whether you are looking to optimize your operations and governance or building of trust or a combination of all four of these, because ultimately uh, I think any organization needs to invest into all four of these pillars. I think that technology and digital is a key enabler and a journey in ESG without using the digital and technology out there. And I'm using the broader technology landscape, I think will will certainly be a very, very difficult journey. And it will probably be there, be a very immature journey where organizations are only looking at energy and not really looking at operations, supply chains and looking at the broader aspect. And I think uh, outside of, 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 of your consumers, your customers, your regulators and governments um, and your employees uh, really looking towards us as businesses to respond in a proper way around this, it, it, it really should be taken very seriously. And I think you'll be surprised and amazed at how much all of these stakeholders that I've just mentioned will support the journey. So, so it's a really exciting time. Uh, for businesses. And I think it's something to be embraced, Michael. Fantastic. Couldn't agree with you more. Henny Himan, you are Africa Advisory Leader, uh, sharing some more insights into how a digital transformation is really intersecting with ESG and providing this great supporting architecture on uh, on the journey that companies are embarking on to net zero here on Business Talk.